Hi, my name is Kai, and today I want to talk about our tendency to often overcomplicate things. See, we sometimes do it because we want to feel smart. Sometimes we think that life inherently is very complex, so the solution to life needs to be complex too. Sometimes we just enjoy the process of coming up with something that is very complex. In many cases, it does come down to a single word, and that word is passivity. Because sometimes our desire to get a more complex solution comes from the simple fact that we don't want to focus on something that is actually the important thing in our life. So we distract ourselves, we come up with more elaborate solutions to some of our problems, just to push the one thing away that we know we need to solve. Number one, think of the outcome rather than the process. Just recently, I spoke to a friend of mine who works in HR, and she had the idea of implementing a no Zoom Thursday makes a lot of sense to me because even on this channel we've already talked about the phenomenon of Zoom fatigue and so getting off the platform and not having Zoom meetings at one day of the week seems a great idea. I was baffled though because she said it was almost impossible for her to implement it because there are so many people who then asked, well, when is the exact start date? What do we do with the meetings that have already been scheduled? What's the exact policy? What are the exceptions? What are the procedures around it? How can we all... And I was baffled because in my opinion, the solution to this was really simple. Send out an email and say, here are the benefits. We want no Zoom calls on a Thursday. And then step back and see what happens. Because the majority of people will probably embrace it. They are glad that they don't have to have Zoom calls on a Thursday. So rather than looking at all the policies and procedures and coming up with examples and things why things don't work, think about the simplest solution to the problem. And in this case, the simplest solution might well be just to send an email. Number two, think about motivation rather than fairness. Yes, I said it. Now we have to have the tough talk, but life isn't fair. Life is created by the motivation around us, in ourselves and those around us in others. Let me give you an example. Again, you could think of a whole policy and procedure. You could think of a whole framework to compensate your employees fairly. And I'm not arguing against that. It's a really good idea. And fair pay is something that we strive for. But let me ask you this. What is the real driver of any organization to pay their employees? They want the employees to do the best work they can and stay in the company for the least amount of pay that they can get away with. It could mean that there are two people who have the same skills, probably put in the same amount of effort. But one person is very dedicated to the company and they can't think of anything better than ever work in this one company. Whereas the other person can see many options and they can see that maybe in another company they get paid a little bit more and so they walk away. Which of the two do you think the company will pay more? regardless of the compensation framework that you establish. Now, again, this isn't an argument for unfair compensation. It's an argument for looking exactly at the motivation of the people behind you. Why are they doing what they are doing? And if you appeal to the motivation rather than think about all the other things that could surround your decision, then you come to a fairly simple conclusion. Third example, think of the spirit rather than the rule. Very often we come up with complicated solutions when there are rules and regulations involved. I remember a time when there was a new regulation released for the asset management industry, which is an industry I worked in before. It was many pages. And so one of the things we did when this regulation came out is looking through the regulation line by line. What does it say? What does that mean? How does it impact our company? And what is the solution that we can apply to it? And given that there were literally hundreds of pages, you can imagine that the resulting work from that was enormous. We came up with all kinds of things that needed to be done, except I said, stop. Let's look at actually the spirit 
of the regulation. What does it try to achieve? What is the problem you try to solve in its true spirit? If you can answer that question, in this particular example, it meant that while we still had to go through every single line of the regulation, we could come up with a practical and simple solution to some of the things that were promoted. And yes, some of the things were not completely in line with the regulation, but we went out, spoke to the regulator and said, hey, this is what you try to achieve. Here is what we came up with. Does that work for you? And in the majority of cases, they said yes. And the fourth thing you can do to avoid overcomplicating things is to come up with a structure that works for you. What I noticed is that whenever I was faced with a new task or a new project or a new challenge, there were a few words that came into my mind first. And those words were people, products and processes. Because whenever I had a new project, I thought about the people that were involved, the product that would be the end result of the project and the type of processes that I would have to go through. And so I noticed that those three words would be present in all the things that I would do. And so I realized this is a structure that works for me. It may not work for you, but you will notice the things that come first into your mind when you are faced with a new situation. Now then, you do have two choices. The first one is, if you like the content, then give me a thumbs up to this video. That helps the algorithm, it helps promoting this video further. I really appreciate it. But the second alternative that you have, the second option you have is what I mentioned at the very beginning. If you now sit there and say, hey, none of that really applies to me, then I dare you. I dare you to give me a call. There is a link in the description box below for a free 15 minute call. I love to talk about subjects like business leadership, self-improvement, and of course, not overcomplicating things. Please do make use of it. Thank you very much for engaging in this video. There is one more thing that I wanted to say, and that is that overcomplicating things can often also be the result of excessive thinking. I did a video on that very recently. I link it on the screen right now. I will see you over there and of course in the next video.